check out all my books on audible.com. Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. Uh, serotonin levels and depression. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Really quickly, I found an article online and it led me to a study. Depression is not caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain. Well, this is what we've been told for, you know, 50, 60 years now, that it's serotonin levels in the body. And if you read down in this uh, article right here, you know, it says, we do not understand what uh, antidepressants are doing to the brain exactly. So they're giving... <laughs> So they're giving antidepressants to people like they were candy, especially to young people, to kids. They give it to child uh, five years old. They give it to children that are six, seven years old. They give it to adults. They give it to seniors. And they don't even know really what it's doing to the brain. And we've been told for years and years that um, depression is low serotonin levels um, in the brain. Well, there's a couple things here that may be true. Um, I, I'm not really sure. I, you know, obviously you've got all these studies. And by the way, here is the actual study, just so you can see it. Serotonin theory of depression, a systemic, a systematic umbrella review of the evidence. Well, they really looked into this and, you know, they're kind of saying, we, we really don't have too much evidence here. Uh, if you just read the abstract, there's a lot, a lot of evidence that ser serotonin is linked to depression. So um, I will just say this. Number one, um, if you do have depression, it's been my, you know, and it, it wasn't really caused by something traumatic. You know, somebody died in your family or whatever. That's depression. But if you have this clinical depression, we're just constantly depressed all the time. You don't know why. Um, that, that very well could be a chemical imbalance in the brain. Um, the only thing, you know, I could recommend is, well, two things. Number one, uh, most of your serotonin is actually made in your stomach. Okay, it's in the digestive tract, primarily the stomach. This is why they call the the stomach the second brain. So um, you know, if you don't have a good di you know a good diet and you don't have good clean digestion and you're not really doing the right things to absorb nutrients and take them in, you're going to have a lot of pro problems um, with you know not only with your health because all disease comes from our diet. Uh, besides what the medical establishment has told us for how many decades now, um, you know, it's all your genes. It comes from your genes. They're looking in the wrong place. It all disease comes from your diet. Um, and you hear, hear you, you, so many people say this. Um, I'm not the only one. But um, so what I would suggest, first of all, is, um, I, and I have seen people that come in and they talk to me about clinical depression. What I suggest to them is number number one, don't stop taking your um, your your medications, because now that gets into you know telling somebody to stop taking your medication, and that's a medical advice. I would never do something like that. You know, like I tell people all the time, I don't know anything about medication, but they this particular these antidepressants, they don't know what it's doing to the brain. It's not interesting. You know, they should know that. Um, I should know that if I'm sp selling you spirulina or chlorella or 5-HTP, which helps produce serotonin in the body, I don't know what it's doing. So I would suggest you take 5-HTP. That comes from the Grafonia seed. It's an extract. It basically gives you tryptophan. It's uh, like 10, 20 times concentrated tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid. So it's really, you know, I, I've given it to people and they've shown some you know some uh, good results with that they've shown some improvement in and their depressed mood going back to the article if you look if you look through here and you read everything because it's nice the article kind of distills it all down the uh, the the um, study is pretty lengthy um, very in-depth by the way so they did a good job and they're basically saying well, we don't know if we should be continue to give out an antidepressants to people um, but if you have problems with serotonin well that's made in your stomach you got to get on a better diet and I tell people first of all stop eating any kind of junk food any kind you know any kind of you know bag food potato chips Doritos all this kind of garbage you, you don't even know what's in this stuff you know they uh, I'll get into that in a later in another video, but you don't really know what's on all these foods. I mean, the labeling laws, and you have to put every single ingredient in there. Uh, well, you can bunch that all together and just call it something that you know you don't really know for sure. Uh, you know what this substance is, and it could be causing you a lot of problems. I don't eat. I haven't eaten anything out of a box or a or, or a jar um, or a can. I mean, it's probably been, you know, 30 or 40 years now since I bought food that way. Um, you know, you see the people in the 
uh, you know, the supermarkets and their little and their wheelchairs and the little scooters. Look at those baskets and what they got in there. They just they're overflowing with garbage. Every kind of frozen food, any kind of everything you can imagine, and then they have a little tiny thing of bananas up on top. And that's as healthy as it gets for them, and that's you know ironically what put them into that position to begin with. A lot of them are on uh, oxygen; they can barely breathe. Your diet puts you there. That's why I'm 64 and I'm so healthy. I'm clear-minded. I'm not falling apart. I know other people that are my age. Um, you know, they're all retiring. They can't do it anymore. They have no energy. Um, these are all the result of the things that you put into your body. Now, getting back to the antidepressants, you got to have antidepressant and depression. At least, uh, you know, I will say there's a huge amount we don't know. Obviously, we, we know this much about the brain, but there's so much we don't know about brain chemicals and what they're what they're doing to us. And as they said. Not only do we not know about the brain, but they're coming out with these medications and we don't know what they're doing. We just think maybe they're raising serotonin levels or they're not. I mean, it looks good on paper. It looks good in a lab. Is it really doing anything? Um, stop eating garbage food. Um, stop eating any kind of fried foods. This is really the worst thing. I'd say it's probably the biggest killer out there. At least the, the, the thing that hurts your health the, the most often is fried foods and I've traveled all over the world and I've never been to a country where you don't see a lot of fried food so we're not the only country in the world that does this I you know I lived in the Middle East for 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 a long time and fried foods are everywhere I was in Israel there was fried foods all over the place falafels everywhere you know um, I go over to I lived in Taiwan same thing the night markets you see tons of fried foods all over the place I I you know traveled all over but I lived in Paris I mean fried food is very common um, and so it's just the way it is and, and the reason is is because frying foods makes them taste so delicious <laughs> but they're deadly so stay away from those because you're di you're really messing up your digestive tract at a fundamental level um, and uh, and you know destroying it so it cannot produce you know brain chemicals such as serotonin and when you produce serotonin again this is the stomach is the second brain so there's a huge connection there's a book out there called the brain uh, gut connection. I haven't read it in a long time, but it's a very interesting book because it shows you this incredible connection between diet and how you're going to think. And this is what happens to elderly people. They all, you know, succumb to senility. Um, and or of, of some, you know, of, to some degree. I remember my parents had that problem. Uh, they kind of went downhill and then they flattened out. But I mean, this is a real problem. Well, this is toxicity in the brain. It's got nothing. You're not going to inherit, you know, this craziness. You're not going to inherit your, you, you know, parents' dementia. You're not going to inherit their Alzheimer's. You are going to put your there yourself yourself there by eating all these foods that don't belong in the body, by di destroying your uh, digestive tract, and by not taking a probiotic, not take, taking digestive enzymes. Um, and, you know, there's all, so many other great, you know, things you can take for your digestive health, any kind of fermented food, uh, apple cider vinegar with acetic acid or just acetic acid powder, uh, apple cider vinegar powder, which I sell, and I also sell the apple cider vinegar. Um, you know, I these are the things that really are great for your digestion. I have I'm so careful about this. Every night when I have my salad, and that's all I eat is a salad. Um, you know, I prepare my my digestion, and you know, I give myself a probiotic. Uh, you know, I take a you know digestive enzyme. I take my apple cider vinegar either powder, but actually on my salads, I always put apple cider vinegar on my my salad every single night. I've done it for 20 years now. But you're really giving yourself the best opportunity to digest your food. And I tell people all the time, you know, you are what you are, you are what you eat. Well, you're not you're not what you eat. You're you are what you can assimilate. And so you need to take the you know a digestive enzyme with that so you can break down these foods and absorb them because again it is about assimilation and not just eating these foods. Um, and so in the end, uh, again going back to this article here and then this study telling you point blank that hey look we you, we really don't know. <laughs> Um, what these you know drugs are doing to the brain well they should know they should have done the stories and if you go through there um, I make the point all the time you know they thought this was true if you read up in, uh, in this article we thought this was true but it turns out this is this is not necessarily um, the case it is right here many people believe that and uh, antidepressants 
will believe to there's a biochemical cause. And now they're saying, well, we don't think this is biochemical. Well, you know, this is goes back to the Warburg effect uh, of in cancer. So the Warburg effect was this guy named Warburg back in I think 1929. He won the the Nobel Prize for discovering how cancer eats away at the body. Well, now they discovered that's 100% false. That they actually is actually something called the re reverse. Warburg effect, and so it was doing the exact opposite of what, of what they thought it was doing. It's not eating the body; it's it's, it's actually it's liquid. It's it's informing the body to liquefy, or instructing the body to liquefy itself and feed the cancer. So this is not the Warburg effect at all. It's the opposite of what they thought, and so they thought that for over a hundred years now, close to a hundred years, and. Um, and so they had it wrong. So when, when the detective's looking for clues to who, who committed the crime over here, and, and the clues are really over here, you're not going to find, uh, you know, what's going on with, with, you know, what you're looking for. You're not going to solve that crime. And the same is true in medicine. If you look for your, you know, all your answers in, in genes, which they say, well, we got the breast, key, breast, the, the breast cancer gene, okay? So remove your breasts. And then we've got the testicular uh, cancer gene, remove your testicles. And on and on this goes, and you get the, you know, the, the ovarian cancer gene. Okay, let's take those ovarian, uh, those ovaries out. Let's remove those. I always keep wondering, what are they going to do when they find the, the brain cancer gene? I, you know, I, I guess it's off with your head. So, you know, just because you know, it looks like that, you know, as I tell people all the time, hey, it looks like, you know, the sun's going around the earth. Well, it turns out, you know, the sun's just sitting there and we're spinning, you know, so the sun is not traveling across the earth. And for thousands of years, we didn't know that was the case, that the, we're just, you know, the sun is just sitting there and we're revolving around it and it, we're spinning. And that's how you get the days. So it, just because something looks some way doesn't mean it actually is that way. And this is a perfect example of that. For how many years have they been giving these people, uh, you know, antidepressants? And I'm telling you, they say this is 2% of the people on them. I see a lot more than that. I can't believe the amount of people that I run into and that I know that are on antidepressants. And they don't like to talk about it because it sounds like it's, um, it's kind of like they feel like they're shamed or something. Um, that they have depression or something, which of course they shouldn't, but they do have this clinical depression, um, and um, and so they're looking for answers in drugs, and the answers to all things, um, including your your depression and your brain and all that kind of stuff, is your your diet. It all comes back to your diet and toxicity. If your brain is toxic, you're going to have problems with uh, brain chemicals. Uh, they're not going to function problem. This is how what en ends up with Alzheimer's. You know, you got so much toxicity in the brain, you just can't think anymore. There's an electrical storm going on inside the brain, and then you're putting all sorts of junk into your body, and it's you know getting into the brain, and uh, the brain is mostly fat, so it's just hanging on to all this stuff. So I found that very interesting article. You could read it yourself. Um, and go to the study, um, and the study itself was uh, it was serotonin theory of depression, uh, a, a, a systematic umbrella uh, review of the evidence in molecular psychiatry. That's where it was found. It's pretty lengthy. Uh, it'll take you a while to go through this thing, um, and. Uh, but it really gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on out there. And uh, these dep antidepressants just aren't doing what they were supposed to do or what they thought they were doing. And they don't know what effect they have on the brain. Dr. Bob, I'll see you guys next time. Hey folks, check out all my books on Amazon.com. Uh, I've written seven books now, uh, but this one's on Audible, Silver, the Miracle Mineral, End of Infectious Disease, uh, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer, that's on Audible. And then my most popular book, I have sold tens of thousands of these books through the years, never promoted it, never marketed it. It is the Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, the definitive guide to the world's healthiest substance. Third edition, I revamped the whole thing. It's on Audible too. So those are all read by the author's voice, my voice, and I hope you like them.